This building is equipped with a fire suppression system. In these cylinders we have a compressed gaseous agent that in the event of a fire it will discharge through the red piping and flood the zone to put the fire out. In addition to the agent piping and bottles, we also have wiring for all the devices associated with it. All the fire suppression wiring is in its own dedicated conduit and the junction boxes have red painted covers to identify it as part of the fire suppression system. In addition to that, we have detectors. They're part of the electrical system for the fire suppression. So up there is a flame detector. That's an optical eye that detects the flames. We also have heat detectors on the ceiling that uh, go off in the event of a high temperature. The sequence for this system is any one detector going off will shut down the engines and sound the alarm horns to acknowledge that there's a problem, bring your attention to the building. If two detectors go off, it shuts down the engines, sounds the alarms, and starts a 30-second countdown. At the end of that 30-second countdown, then the agent is discharged and floods the zone to put the fire out. In addition, at the exit from the generation room and the control room, is, there's a manual pull station. So if you're in the building and a fire breaks out and the detectors haven't set the system off, you can manually discharge it by lifting up, pulling on the handle. That will again shut the engines down, start a 30 second countdown, and then you have 30 seconds until the agent discharges. Uh, next to that, there's a yellow button. That's an abort switch. What that does is puts a 30 second delay on the system discharging. So if you're in the building and there was a problem where it set off a detector but there wasn't really a fire, you can push that. That would give you 30 seconds to attempt to get a reset through the control panel and, and set the system back to avoid discharging your agent. Now, this is the control panel. It's the brains of the system. And right now we're seeing what would be a normal display. There's no alarms, there's no problems. Now the most common alarm you would have would be a loss of power. Anytime there's a power outage, you'll get a, an alarm on this. And we're going to simulate that by turning off the breaker. So we have the power off and it's, it's listed as a trouble event. We're hearing an alarm, so we can silence that alarm with the alarm silence button. Then we can press ACK, which is acknowledged, so we've acknowledged the problem. Now, once the power is restored, now we have a alarm that says, or a message that says the power is restored, so we still have a, an event of the problem. It's a log of the event. Then we press the reset button. That clears all of the alarm messages, and we're back to our normal screen. Now, in the event of a discharge or an alarm condition that shuts down the engines, the, the switch gear is disabled. There's a tie to the switch gear, so it'll shut the engines down. You can't restart it till it's cleared. So if you can reset it, then you can get the engines going again. If you cannot reset it and you've had a major event, say you've had a discharge and the system is shut down, then what you have to do is go to the circuit breaker and turn off the AC power and then Again, it takes about a five second delay, but we'll get a message that the power has been lost. Okay, so that's our trouble. Then you have to pull the, the battery lead because the DC batteries here are the backup to it. So if you pull that and it goes away, now the system is disabled. At this point in time, you can get the engine started, put the power back online, but your fire suppression system is no longer working. So you would need to contact a service technician and get somebody out here to repair and recertify the system to put it back into service as soon as possible. Okay, to be in compliance with the fire code, any fire suppression system needs to be recertified once a year. Now, typically in any village, the school will have a fire uh, technician come into the community to certify their system. So the most economical way to get this done would be to team up with the school and at the same time the technician comes in, have them come through test and recertify the system to keep it current, keep it in compliance, and to keep your facility protected from a fire.